Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Red Donkey Projections. My name is Lucas, and I have Eric here as always. Hey guys. And today we'll be taking a look at the 2020 presidential election, our own predictions. We'll be going through each and every state, showing what we've changed, which quite honestly, there hasn't been much that we changed, um, but we did want to take a look at it because this is our bi- and bi- uh, bi-weekly prediction. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Let's first start by going through all these safe states for uh, Joe Biden and now we know it's Kamala Harris. Washington, Oregon, California. Again, I don't think we had to explain this, but California is not going red. Um, The reason for that is because you have giant, giant cities in California who are going to vote for the Democrats. California is one of the most solid Democratic states in the nation so don't expect this to go blue anytime soon because it is actually trending more to the left. Lucas Matt red. Red. Don't expect it to go red anytime. Yeah, sorry. Don't expect it to go red because um, we're getting a lot of comments saying, "Oh, California is going red." Trust me, no, it will not happen. Um, and in terms of just adding Harris to the ticket, unfortunately for the Democrats, that's not a lot of regional advantages. Potentially Arizona, um, which borders California and Nevada, which was already likely going to the Democrats in the first place. So Kamala Harris does not add that much um, a boost for Joe Biden in terms of winning state. Maybe her campaigning skills as an eloquent and kind of um, very bold speaker can help him and will just increase his margins overall. Mm. And uh, New Mexico, we have moved a couple videos ago. We moved it from likely to safe at this point because we do think it can go to Biden in a safe margin. Now I'm going to talk about New York. I didn't think I needed to explain New York, but since we're also getting comments about New York turning red, despite what the president might say, New York will not turn red. Here's the tea about New York. Upstate New York and Staten Island, sure, it's pretty Republican. Now, once you get into the other boroughs of New York City, you go to Manhattan, you go to Brooklyn, you go to uh, the Bronx, you go to... um, Queens. Okay, what's the last one? Queens. Queens. Oh, yeah, I should remember that. But um, you go into those uh, boroughs. They're very, very, very democratic. A mm-hmm. lot of them, are, they're like solid, solidly liberal. And yeah. that's not good for the Republicans. And, this, and the other reason why it's not good is because those four boroughs are very, 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 very populated. Sure, Staten Island's part of New York City, and it's pretty Republican. It's a pretty um, suburban area, though, so that's... It is, and it's also very, very... Compared to the other boroughs, it's very much not populated as well, as at all. If you look at the New York City Council, which they do it, um, they give members based on the population of each borough, Staten Island only gets three out of the 51 uh, council seats. So therefore, Staten Island being kind of conservative and same with upstate New York is not going to really impact anything here in New York, it's going to go to Joe Biden, despite what the president might say. I did not think we need to explain this, um, but apparently people do think that it's possible that New York goes red, which there is zero, zero chance that it will go red. All right. And quite honestly, um, if President Trump chooses to spend money on his ads here, that's on him. He's spending money in a safe blue state when he should be focusing on the other swing states that show him trailing right now. So uh, not a good idea to focus on New York. It will not be turning uh, red any time soon. All right, enough with that. Let's now head to our safe uh, Republican states. Yep, we Idaho. The, yep, yep. Yeah, the usual middle of the country. Eventually we'll go down south. We have made a few changes um, down south and a few states in the west. We'll talk about those. Um, I'll actually put them in right now. Yeah. South Carolina. Trump's leading in the polls here by just 6.5%. If we see an, Af- an, uh, an increased African-American turnout, that will look very good for the Democrats because they do tend to vote for the Democratic candidate. Now, I say 6.5%. I say only 6.5%. Sure, it might be pretty solid in your minds. But in perspective, Joe Biden's leading in Pennsylvania by 6.5 points. And Pennsylvania is supposed to be a swing state. 
South Carolina, South Carolina is not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a Republican stronghold. So we're moving the state now from solid to likely. Same with uh, Mississippi. High African-American elector. We could see higher turnout from them. That would also look very good for the Democrats as well. Actually, um, what could help um, the margins um, decrease for the, well, in favor of the Democrats is um, Representative Jim Clyburn's endorsement of Joe Biden. He is the majority whip and he is the top, the third most powerful representative in the, in the, in the House. And his endorsement and his um, time being spent in the Democratic National Convention could increase some Democratic turnout. And I think that potentially Kamala Harris um, endorsing by uh, <laughs> Kamala Harris being the vice presidential nominee could also increase African American turnout as well. Um, and we are also going to be moving Missouri to likely, Utah to likely, Montana to likely. These three states have become a lot less solid for the Republicans, according to you know polling data. They're not leading in as huge margins as we once thought before. So we are going to be moving them to likely now. And I think that is it for all the likely, ooh, Alaska. Alaska, the new polls are coming out. They are showing a bit of a bigger lead than just like three points for Trump now, um, but it's definitely not safe. We're putting this one as likely for now. And also, Before we get to Virginia. West yep. Virginia. West Virginia, yep. All right, let's run through the likely Democratic states. Nevada, yes, polling is showing Biden up by like not like double digits. But Nevada, interestingly enough, Polling here leans to the right. Um, we're getting comments all the time saying, oh, this is fake Democrats polls. But just know that polling doesn't always uh, swing to the left. In Nevada in 2016, Trump was projected to win the state by, I believe, about 1%. This one obviously did went, go to Clinton. So that was obviously not correct there. Um, Colorado, new type of Democratic uh, stronghold. When I say new, I don't mean like oh, last year became new, like something like Arizona, but it slowly is shifting more to the left rapidly, and polling isn't showing as much of a strong hold on it as some of the other swing states we've characterized. Virginia, new type of swing state as well. I remember watching 2008 election. Um, still a very, very huge swing state back then. It has not become that anymore. Um, I think that actually, oh, New Hampshire, technically a swing state. Um, polling is showing Biden doing well. It's also in the Northeast. So we do think that at the end of the day, Biden will carry the state probably in a likely. Clinton did do really bad here, but we think that Biden can improve on her margins here. And actually, as we did in our last prediction, our final likely state, I know it's kind of surprising to see this as likely, but it's actually Michigan. I'll let Eric talk to you guys about this one. Yep. Um, Michigan has really, really moved to the left these past few months. Um, this is really surprising. You know, Donald Trump did, did take these states in 2016, but it has been affected by the coronavirus and the Black Lives Matter movements. Gretchen Whitmer, the governor here, did speak at the Democratic National um, Convention last night, and polling is showing strong support for Michigan. In fact, I actually don't think this is the last thing because we also have Minnesota left. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did forget about that. Um, thanks for reminding me. Yes, Michigan, I think that will – right now it's looking pretty good for Joe Biden. Um, we actually saw Trump withdraw ads here, um, so that's interesting to see. Um, Minnesota is also another likely state. Um, we, we are going to put this one as likely. Still, we are seeing new polls out showing Biden not leading as big as margins as people once thought. We're going to keep an eye on this one because this is the – one state that out of the states that Clinton won in 2016, this is the one state that's most likely to go to Trump, but we're going to keep a close eye on this one because we had to look at all the events that happened here. You had the George Floyd uh, death. This was the epicenter. This is a state where it happened. You had the, a lot of protests here as well. So we're going to keep this one as likely for now. Um, it'll be interesting to see if it changes in the future, which we don't think, and we think it will still probably go to Joe Biden, regardless of what changes in the future. All right. Now let's head to, let's do the lean states now. Um, let's start with uh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Fun fact about Pennsylvania, Donald Trump also actually pulled his ads out of here. There was um, a new re video released on YouTube that talked about this. And that's pretty surprising because Pennsylvania is quite contested and it is one of the top states 
that you know matter for this election and could be the difference so it's interesting to see how the administration pulled their ads out of here which is really you know we're not going to be seeing um the trump campaign's messages a lot and i i don't know you know interesting decision of them yeah i think it's definitely interesting eric why don't you talk about this one yeah so um as the other two battleground states are blue wall states. Donald Trump did win this state. He won Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And now they're all leading in favor of Biden. As Lucas said, kind of like South Carolina right now, Pennsylvania is le- is being, you know, it is in favor for Biden by about six and a half points in the polls. You know, we have Philadelphia, a very, very democratic city that is, you know, um, that expresses their significant support for Joe Biden. And overall, there are a few counties here and there, some swing counties that are in, in, in support of Joe Biden. Right. Uh, Pennsylvania is, doesn't really have that many swing counties. It's mainly about margins here. If we look at 2016 versus 2012, it was those central and like more of the southern um, counties that turned out for Trump in higher margins that allowed him to get his victory in the state. Um, we do think that Biden will pull off a win here. And um, you're probably asking why, why put South Carolina as likely, even though the polling numbers are the same, because South Carolina is pretty solidly Republican. Um, so we're gonna put this one as likely for now. Um, oh, all right, let's head to uh, Wisconsin now. Wisconsin is definitely an issue we want to talk about. Um, this state is more conservative than the other um, Rust Belt states. At the end of the day, we do think that Biden will carry this. He's leading here in a very good margin. I think around six to seven points, maybe even seven points now. I don't remember. Um, But it's looking very, very good for him. And it's right next to the epicenter of the Black Lives Matter uh, protests in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, We're not seeing as many protests as we might have seen before. But I think that Wisconsin, considering its proximity to Minnesota, that it will probably turn um, blue this time, probably within a lean. As I said before, polling looks very good for him here. We do think that at the end of the day, this will go to Joe Biden. All right, let's actually head to uh, Texas now. Eric, why don't you talk about Texas? Sure, Lucas. Um, Texas is interesting, and we've talked about it in many videos. We've talked about how Joe Biden at one point was leading in the polls in Texas for like a week. He was leading by like 0.5, 0.7. You can check that video out. Um, But same with South Carolina. Texas has a pretty Republican foundation, and it has consistently voted Republican in the past. So just because it's it's, it's very close in the polls this election does not mean it's going to be super, super contested. It is definitely more contested. And even in 2016, it was the first time that Texas was not won by a Republican within a double digit margin. Um, it's definitely going to be closer this year, but still, there are very um, conservative, conservative Republicans in here. Um, it, it, Texas is known for this. Um, before we had it as a likely safe, now I think we can put it in a lean because it's definitely going to be close. Right. We think it's going to be contested, but we don't think it's. Um... We don't think it's that Joe Biden has that great of a chance here. Um, what Joe Biden needs for victory here is higher uh, Latino turnout, Latina turnout, Latinx turnout, um, as well as higher turnout from the white educated um, people here as well, mm-hmm. white educated voters. Speaking All right. Which, um, Biden has already won the election, 276 votes, but these are not our complete predictions yet. Interesting. All right. So let's now head to the state of Arizona. This is a very, very new swing state now. Um, It has swung a lot to the left recently. Polling has generally been favorable for Joe Biden. I think we did see one poll where uh, Trump was leading now, but I remember that was not a good pollster for sure. Um, Arizona, it really did come down to Maricopa County in 2018 and 2016 in that with the flip of Maricopa County, Kirsten Sinema was able to win the, the Senate race here in, uh, in 2018. So we do think that there is potentially going to be a flip of that as well. Arizona also has a high Latino 
Latino turnout, Latino electorate as well. Higher turnout from them would prove to be very good for Joe Biden. And we do predict that it will probably be happening here. And uh, yep. once again, Kamala Harris is right next to Arizona and California. So maybe that can provide a regional advantage. Yeah, definitely. Potentially, there could be a, a regional advantage um, here for sure. All right. Now let's head to the state of, uh, let's go to Florida. Eric, how about you talk about Florida? Sure. Um, once again, we're seeing a pattern here. Donald Trump won the state in 2016, and it is one of the most famous battleground states. You know, everyone looks at Florida. How will Florida go this way in this election? How will Florida go in that election? Well, right now, Florida is um, in favor of Joe Biden a lot. Um, I think the new newest poll average is about 5.7, less than before, which was about seven points as of when we made our video about Florida. But it's um, this is still pretty good margins for Joe. Uh, yeah, for Joe Biden, um, Florida. Um, provides a big boost in Joe Biden's numbers. He's already over 300. And right now he's likely to win Florida and it's a very good bonus for him. And I think COVID-19 definitely is a factor here. From DeSantis's poor handling, people are not gonna think about that in a positive way because DeSantis is essentially, um, he's a very strong ally of Trump. So it's not gonna reflect well on Trump if DeSantis isn't handling as well. We're seeing new records in the state of Florida. Um, which is definitely not good. All right, let's now go to, oh, that's right. I forgot about uh, Maine, Allstate. Maine, Allstate, where we have as uh, likely, we don't think it's going to go in a safe margin yet, but we still think it is pretty solid for um, Joe Biden here. Let's head actually to Georgia now. Georgia is a new type of swing state. It's becoming purple. Um, this used to be a solid, solid GOP state. It has since moved to the left a bit with the um, African-American electorate actually being a bit larger. So higher turnout from them here would look very good for Joe Biden. Um, we don't think that those numbers are necessarily going to overcome the solid conservative base here. And that's why we're putting as as lean. And also, I do believe that Trump has taken the lead here in the polling now. Um, I think by about a percentage point, actually. It used to have Joe Biden leading. That's why we did have it at till before. That has since changed, so we are putting this one now as lean Republican. Now, Eric will be heading to um, Maine Second District. Yep. So Maine Second District is a bit more of a Republican area. You can see by the size of the district, which means there's a bit less of a population, more rural area, which usually leans Republican. Donald Trump has a pretty good chance of winning Maine Second District. There's not much of a likeliness that it will go to the Democrat. It only does carry one electoral vote, but um, Republicans have a pretty good stronghold here. It usually goes to the Republican. I agree with that. Let's out to Iowa now. Iowa did go to Barack Obama in 2008 and 2012, actually. Uh, went to Trump by nine points in uh, 2016, larger margin than Texas. Iowa has a decent amount of rural areas and also suburban areas that are quite conservative. So keeping that in mind, we do think that Trump will probably take the victory here, probably in a lean. Looking at polling right now, it looks pretty favorable for him. Um, so we're going to put the state as a lean. Ohio, similar case. Ohio is definitely a lot less solidly for um, the GOP than uh, Iowa is, but Ohio still has is still pretty conservative inside. John Kasich, a very popular former, the very popular former governor of Ohio, he was actually a Republican, did endorse Joe Biden. It could potentially swing some of those undecided moderate Republican voters over. But we don't think it's going to do too much here. Yeah. Polling yep. does Pol show Biden up, actually, I believe. Or has he lost the lead again? I don't remember. No, um, Biden is holding um, a bit of a lead. I think less than a percentage point, but it is a lead. Yeah, but once again, Ohio is pretty conservative. And just because Biden is leading by less than a percentage point doesn't mean it will be consistent and it will probably switch back to Donald Trump, just like Texas. Yeah, we could definitely see that happen. So the, for that reason, we are going to put Ohio as lean. Um, I'll go with North Carolina. Eric will take Nebraska second. North Carolina has a pretty high African-American um, electorate. 
city of Charlotte, lots and lots of people there. There's a few other counties here that have a lot of, lot of people as well who do tend to turn out for the Democrats. Um, a lot of the minority groups vote for Democrats usually. North Carolina, we see a lead for Joe Biden. It has significantly narrowed, I believe. Um, it's now only a 1.7 point lead. We could potentially see North Carolina flip to Trump um, in, the, in the coming months. But right now, it does look like it will go to Joe Biden. In a, uh, it's going to be definitely very contested here. Um, but again, North Carolina doesn't really matter that much because all Joe Biden needs is the Rust Belt. He doesn't even need like Arizona or Florida, and he's fine. So North Carolina at this point is just a bonus, but we do have him leading here. And Eric will head to our final state in quotes, uh, Nebraska 2nd District. Yep. So Nebraska 2nd District, as you can see, the little gray area in Nebraska is a very small congressional district that has a lot of people. It has the city of Omaha, very populated area that usually leans to the left. I think Obama was able to win this um, district definitely in 2008. Right now, we actually put Nebraska second as a tilt. Uh, we are seeing new polls that, you know, plus 11 for Biden. I think that was a bit of an outlier and not that recent. But um, we do think that in this election for now, Joe Biden can win this in a tilt. Um, it, once again, this is a congressional district, only carries one electoral vote. But um, it is, you know, a congressional district that, you know, is highly contested in a lot of elections. Right. Um, I think you misspoke there. Um, we are not really getting new polls in. We still only have two polls to work off of. For some reason, we're not getting any new polls in. But from what we, what we have right now, it does look like a very solid lead for Joe Biden. Um, seven points and 11 points. So that's very interesting to see um, in the rest of second congressional district. And that's the end of the video for today. This is our final map, 204 to 334. Really, the numbers have not changed. Um, the only state that we can potentially see flipping from blue to red or red to blue in the um, in the coming months, maybe in like, I don't know, uh, October, is maybe North Carolina can flip red, maybe in Rasta second. But other than that, we think that everything else is pretty in place right now. Um, but again, in politics, I say this all the time, in politics, four months, or is it four months? I think it's, no, it's not four months. It's three, three months. months. In politics, three months is five million years. So we got to wait and see what else happens here. And that's the end of the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. And if you like our content, please hit subscribe. We are almost at 2,000. We are at wow. just under 1.5 thousand right now. We Not need 50 more subscribers and we'll hit 2,000. Please subscribe today. Hit that bell button to get our notifications. And we'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya.